you do? I am a butcher, cut the chicken. In Bristol, Officer Joe has become wise to the game. It's been maybe telling the truth. I suspect not. <laughs> And at Gatwick, Officer Chris uncovers a fortune. How much money are you carrying today? Uh, 80,000. 80, yeah. At Gatwick Airport, an incoming flight from Madrid has put UK border agency officers on high alert. Obviously, we do tend to get connectors coming in from South America. So, basically, that's the reason why we're using a dog for this, just to see if anything comes up. The flight from Madrid is a known transit route for drug smugglers. So, officers are carefully watching for any suspicious behavior. One passenger who originally started his journey in Bolivia is of particular interest. Yeah, it just seems a bit of an odd routing. He does seem quite nervous. In the customs channels, sniffer dog Barney gets a chance to assess the passenger. But with no indication given, Officer Fitz takes him aside for further questioning. Hello, sir. Hi. Where are you arriving from today? Sorry? Where are you arriving from today? Uh, I came in. I left Bolivia mm -hmm. after Argentina, mm -hmm. Madrid, and uh, I come in now, yeah. Right. I just want to come to one of the benches to have a quick word. OK. Are you aware that there are certain items you cannot bring into the UK? No. Yeah? Just think Such so. as drugs? No. Okay. Firearms? Yeah. No. I'll just need to answer the questions yeah. first, OK? OK. There are certain things you can't bring into the UK, such as drugs, firearms, and obscene material involving minors. Do you have any of those items in your no. tool? OK, then. Okay, if you leave that open, just leave that open, that's fine. We'll have a look at that. With communication difficult, Fitz proceeds with searching the nervous man's suitcase. Monopoly fan? After a quick rummage, an unwelcome visitor rears its head. Yeah. <laughs> Something crawling in there. Looks like you picked up a visitor. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm quite glad you did that, not me. You picked up a traveller. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> right, you said you work, yes? What, what is it you actually do? I am a butcher, cut the chicken. Oh, you're a butcher? After searching the suitcase, Fitz is alarmed to find a passport that doesn't belong to the man. OK, who, who is this? Uh, this is for my, uh, my sister-in-law, wife in London. Why have you got her passport? The daughter of Vivian is my... my sister-in-law mm -hmm. sent this forgive the mother because the mother and uh, bring the daughter. Uh, you understand that? Uh... Right. OK. But the communication barrier may still be a problem. Fitz remains suspicious of the man's story and his nervous behaviour. At Bristol Airport, a flight has just landed from Tenerife. Officers are x-raying the luggage coming off the flight, and straight away, they found some bags which are stuffed with cigarettes. He's all full. Yeah, I've put that. He's, he's all the same name, right? He's all the same name. Right. Um, at the moment, it appears like we've got three bags full of cigarettes um, under the same name, so it looks like it could be a commercial amount, but I think. Having identified three bags, they're put back on the luggage carousel. Officers head inside to see who will collect them. The bags have been checked in under one name, but three separate passengers pick them up. As anticipated, they walk straight through the Nothing to Declare channel, where Officer Joe is waiting to meet them. All three of you, do you want to come over? Yeah. And where have you arrived from today? Are you all aware there are prohibitions and restrictions on entering the UK? Certain things you can't bring into the UK, such as uh, controlled drugs and decent sea material, farms, explosives, things like that. Oh, you aware yeah, of these yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You aware um, the Canary Islands outside the European Union, so there's certain restrictions on how to cigarettes, alcohol, and tobacco you can bring through. You aware of that? No. Okay. No, okay, do you have, no, 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 no. Okay, do you have any cigarettes, alcohol, tobacco with you today? Yeah. 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 How much do you have? 
Um, 42 sleeves. 42 sleeves each. Okay. All three passengers are massively over their allowance. All right, the allowance is one of these each. Okay? Okay. That's your allowance, one of these each. Why is it one, one sleeve? Why is it? Because yeah. um, Canary Islands is outside the European Union. So you're only allowed 200 cigarettes each or 250 grams of tobacco. Well, I never knew that one. I thought it was, no. That's why they're so cheap over there, because you, you haven't well, that's paid... That's why I You haven't paid duty on the cheap. goods. Well, that's why I bought so many, I didn't realise. I thought, why are you that wrong? But ignorance is no excuse. Travellers are required to know their allowances. Joe will have to unpack all three bags to find out just how big the haul is. In Gatwick, Officer Fitz is deciding what to do with the nervous Bolivian passenger who's been found carrying someone else's passport. He says he's bringing his sister-in-law's daughter's passport over because obviously she wants her daughter here. That's the reason why he's brought the passport over to get a visa. The suspicious passport is taken to immigration to be checked. Meanwhile, the passenger is led away to be searched. We have a lot of problems with drugs coming into the country, especially from South America. I have problems. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that you have any problems. What I'm saying uh, is there are... Me, I know, yeah. I know. Mate. You understand that? Yeah. We have problems with drugs mm -hmm. coming into the country. Now, to satisfy myself that you have nothing on you at all, what I want to do is a search of person, which is basically a rub-down search of your body. Whilst Fitz conducts a search of the passenger, his colleague Tony returns from immigration with the suspicious passport. I've been down to the, uh, what they call the primary control point, which is the passport control, and I've spoken to the chief immigration officer down there and the forgery officer. They're satisfied that the child's passport is genuine, but they say there's no way that the passport would be brought here for a visa to be issued. They wouldn't issue a visa like that. It's also got a refusal for a visa stamp in the back from another country. So they're going to come up and have a word with the gentleman and quite possibly hang on to the passport. Nothing is found during the search of the passenger, so officers swab test his shoes. See what happens to him. If he's carrying packages internally, traces of drugs could be found in the sweat from his feet. And a high reading for cocaine makes officers suspect that he could be a swallower. What we've done is, we've done a swab on your shoes, a substance has been detected of cocaine. All right? So, the time is 17.55, and I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug internally. The man is led away for a full body x-ray. What I need you to do is take a deep breath in and out, then breathe in again, and then we'll when we'll tell you to breathe out, that's when it'll start rolling, all right? Okay. Okay, okay to the end, stay to the end. Breathe out. That's it. But it quickly becomes apparent that he hasn't swallowed any drugs. Negative. Yeah, OK. That's fine. Clear. Cool, thank you. Right. OK, all done. With the X-ray clear, the traces for cocaine are put down to contamination and the man is free to leave. The passport he was carrying on behalf of his sister-in-law was seized and handed over to the Bolivian embassy. Back at Bristol, Officer Joe is still unpacking the masses of cigarettes which have been brought back into the UK illegally from Tenerife. Did you plan to buy these cigarettes? Not, not, not right not there. Not there. But when we got there and we realised what the price was like, yeah. So you didn't plan to buy them? Oh, yeah. yeah. Joe spots something on the woman's luggage tag, which makes him doubt their story further. Who's, who's Mrs... Oh. A friend? Yeah. So all the, all the bags are under the name of Mrs... So who's Mrs... This is my bag. My name is on my bag. It was checked in under the name of Mrs... You don't, so, she, so, she, so you do know Mrs. Yeah, yeah, but we don't know. I didn't know her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
The three bags, all being checked in under someone else's name, makes Joe suspect the cigarettes were never intended for personal use. The fact that they're all under the same name uh, makes me think that this Mrs. has uh, paid for these people to go to Canary Islands to bring back these cigarettes for her. So they're just basically carrying it for her, I'd imagine. Sign here just to say these goods have been seized from you today, OK? Just get a signature there, please. With duty in the region of £40 for each sleeve of 200 cigarettes, the three passengers almost cost the UK tax system £5,000. Once the paperwork is complete, the passengers are free to leave without their cigarettes. They're given a warning and next time may face prosecution. OK, thanks for your time. I don't know. They may be telling the truth. I suspect not. <laughs> The cigarettes are bagged up, ready to be destroyed. Coming up, sniffer dog Diesel, one of Gatwick's longest serving canines, is put to the test. Basically, they've opened up the unit now, and uh, you can just see there's packages here and here. Coming up, suspicions are raised about a travelling Chelsea fan. He's got no idea what the stadium is. He's got no ticket, it would appear. He's got no idea who Chelsea are playing. At Gatwick Airport, the UK border agency isn't just preventing passengers from bringing illegal drugs into the country. Thousands of tons of freight passes through the airport every year. And officers work in tandem with sniffer dogs to check packages for illegal substances. Today, Officer Lorna and Sniffer Dog Diesel have arrived at the cargo hangar to assess a small part of today's consignment. We're just over at the freight sheds and uh, we're going to cover the freight that's just come off of the Virgin Bridgetown flight. So we'll see what he does. These. Looking for any interest from the dog, really, and then one of the anti smugglers will have a look and see if there's any cocaine or heroin. As one of the airport's longest serving dogs, Diesel has sniffed out dozens of Class A drug seizures over the years, making him one of the officer's most valuable assets. And it doesn't take long for him to start showing some interest around one of the packages. The box contains a vacuum cleaner, so officers remove it from its packaging to take a closer look. And Diesel just can't keep away from it. With a suspected drug concealment, there's only one way to find out what's inside. It looks like two of the screws have had glue put on them, so it makes it harder to get inside. As you see, he's nearly getting into it now. He's just dismantling the whole thing, so we'll just see what he can find. It appears to be underneath here some packages. Oh, yeah, black tape packages. Basically, they've opened up the unit now, and uh, you can just see there's packages here and here. So what we're going to do is get the dog over, have another look at it, and see if the dog indicates. And almost instantly, Diesel makes another of his trademark indications on the packages inside the vacuum cleaner. As you saw, as the dog got close to the scent, uh, it gave a free stare indication. Um, basically, it just freezes at the scent and won't move and, until the handler throws in a tennis ball. And basically, that was that was a perfect indication. And as you see, the packages are coming out, and they're only small and they look properly tight wrapped. That's why he had to get his nose right on the source of the scent. All right, what we'll do when we find things like this, we'll uh, do a, what we call a field test. So I'm going to put some of the powder onto this filter paper, just put this liquid onto it. If it's cocaine, it will just flash up like a very turquoise aquamarine blue. It usually takes less than half a second to a second to do that. You can see, it's, it's going this turquoise colour straight away. That basically indicates the presence of cocaine on the powder. It's another impressive find by Diesel. Thanks to his sensitive nose, cocaine worth more than £8,000 will not reach the UK streets. Across at Gatwick's North Terminal, it's business as usual. The flight has just arrived from Dubai, and border agency officers are processing passengers passing through immigration. One passenger from Cameroon has caught the attention of officers after he claimed he'd come to the UK to watch a football match. These are customs red and green channels. If you've got anything to declare to customs, you need to use the red channel. 
you've got any cigarettes, any alcohol, anything like that. If you're not sure, if you're not sure, go into the Red Channel. If you're quite happy, you've got nothing like that, you can come to the Green Channel with me. I just had my money. OK, how much money are you carrying today? Uh, 80,000. 80,000? Yeah. Is that what... What currency is that in? Is that in dollars? Yeah, better, sterling? Better. Dollars. All right, we'll have a chat about that. Come this way. It's a huge amount of cash for one passenger to be carrying. The man has a lot of questions to answer about exactly what he's doing here. So Officer Chris pulls him aside in the customs channels. Are all the bags yours? No. Are all the bags yours? Yes, yeah. Okay. Did you pack all the bags yourself? Yeah. They can anything in your bags for anyone else? So they don't give you any gifts or goods to carry for them into this country. Okay. And as well as the cigarettes. Very simply, he's um, Cameroonian, but he's also got residency in Thailand. So he's coming here allegedly to see Chelsea play. He's got no idea where the stadium is. He's got no ticket, it would appear. He's got no idea which hotel he's stopping in. He's got no idea who Chelsea are playing. So what sort of things are you going to do whilst you're here then? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please, Tony, that one. Officer Tony steps in to help with the investigation. My friend is just using a little swabbing device. It just checks if you come into contact with anything like, you know, drugs we spoke about earlier. It's just like a little sniffer dog. And a small trace reading for cocaine deepens the intrigue. It's, um, it shows traces, but it's not hitting the red zone, but it's still a significant um, link, so it's up to Chris how he wants to play it. Whilst going through the man's belongings, Chris has made an unusual discovery. I'll have a bit of some of these for me. Just gives me a bit. What are they? Yeah. What are they? Yeah. What are they? Hey, Just her extensions. Yeah. Is that your line of business? This is my business. I have salon. I have, ah. I have my own salon. Yeah. And I produce this. Right, let's pack that back out for you. You sure? Let's have, if you're happy, that's have you a bit of time. I'll look at that bag next if you like. Thank you. With suspicious reasons being given for the purpose of his visit, officers will need to take their search to the next level. In the south terminal, a flight has just landed from Tripoli in Libya. As luggage is being unloaded from the flight, officers have noticed a strange odor coming from a number of suitcases. The luggage is placed back on the carousel, and as the pungent suitcases are collected, the owners are stopped for questioning in the customs channels. Okay, is it just fish? Nothing yeah, else? fish, yeah. Nothing else but fish, yeah? Just food. My mum, right. I'll for my brother, sisters, my right. mum. Yeah, yeah, okay, but it all belongs to you, doesn't it? Yeah, but some of I'll give to them. Well, no, you said, when I asked you the initial questions, you said these bags were yours and yours alone. No, because I put it on my name, that's what yeah. I'm saying. No, because said, it's because it's you said to me. Yeah, because it's because my name, I cannot like it. That's why. From outside the EU, there's a strict allowance of 20 kilograms of fish per person. It's become apparent that the woman's travelling companions are people she's just met in the baggage hall. The, the first time they come in this country, they don't speak English. I was happy and happy with my children. Officers suspect that the woman may have befriended the other passengers so they would unwittingly share her imported food allowance. The first suitcase is stuffed to the brim with smoked fish. So if she's carrying any more, she'll be well over her allowance. It's just dried smoked fish, it's whether it's dried or, or wet fish. If you go over the uh, 20 kilos uh, allowance, uh, it's all liable to seizure. And it doesn't look particularly appetising. Officers open the woman's second suitcase, which is also stuffed to the brim with smoked fish. It's clear she has well exceeded her allowance. The regulations are 20 kilos of fish. If you go over that, it's deemed as a commercial amount and we're entitled to take the whole lot. So in this case, it was about 43 kilos of fish, uh, just for the one passenger. Despite being way over her allowance, the passenger is far from happy that she'll be leaving with nothing. 20 kilos. 20 kilos? And why don't you give me my 20 kilos? 
because if you exceed your 20 kilo now, the room pounds just take a whole lot from you. Okay. It's your responsibility as a traveller to ensure you know what your allowances are. It's your responsibility to let people watch the how many kilos you have to bring. It's your responsibility, I'm afraid. The 43 kilograms of fish are bagged up and ready to be destroyed. The disgruntled woman is given a warning and released. In Gatwick's North Terminal, officers are still investigating a Cameroonian passenger who's carrying over 80,000 US dollars in cash. Tony. What does that say? UN security on it. What? Looks like it. The unusual find makes officers suspect that the stamp may be being used for fraudulent purposes. In his bag, we found a, a stamp which says UN security code. Why would you have something like that? I think it's probably worth running it by our colleagues uh, in special branch, as was called, the counter-terrorism unit now. Um, this is very old. So they may be very interested in that. If you don't want to talk to you, no, no problem. Yep. Officer Chris heads over to the counter-terrorism team with a suspicious stamp. Meanwhile, his colleague Tony continues his search of the passenger's belongings and investigates the large amount of money he's carrying. He has um, rather a lot of cash with him. Um, he's required, when he comes into the EU, to make a declaration of anything more than 10,000 euros. What you need to do is complete this form yeah. with the details of what you've got there. This is a leaflet that explains to you what the law is, why you have to make a declaration. Okay? But at the moment, the moment what he says he's doing is coming here to as a tourist, but also to look for stock for his shop because he has a hair salon back where he lives. So he's got quite a bit of cash just to fund the purchases of that as well as to stay here. So obviously as it's more than the 10,000 euro that he has to declare, just waiting for him to do a declaration. Whilst Chris and Tony were happy that the man's cash was for legitimate business purposes, a further investigation was launched into his dodgy UN stamp. He was taken away by the counter-terrorism unit for further questioning. After investigating...